Varashi is often translated as planet in own house. It is like you being in your own house. What happens when you are in your own house? You are comfortable. You are secure. You are protected. And so is the planet in own house. The planet is comfortable. So the planet gives you comfort. In the area signified by the planet, in the dashantar, the of the planet. The planet is also protected. So it protects whatever it signifies. So you say if seventh lord is in own Rashi, it protects marriage. If the tenth lord is in own Rashi, then it protects your profession. So there is no one who can make you leave your profession until and unless you wanted to leave it or you have lost interest in it. And it also makes you secure in the dasha antar dasha of the planet. Your position is secure in the end. There is no one who can replace you. As I have told earlier as well, after exaltation and mulutrikon, planet in Onarashi is the third most powerful condition for a planet. So this planet gives good result in their dasha antar dasha. Whatever is signified by the planet, that result comes to pass for sure. And the nature behavior character of the planet is strongly present in the nature behavior character of the native. Like the planet in Muldrikona also, exalted planet gives twice the result. The 11th Lord and 2nd Lord in Muldrikona gives two sources of income. 10th Lord in Muldrikona gives two professions. Right? And ninth Lord in Mulutrikona will generally indicate that one have a father and a godfather, a great help in their life. Seventh Lord in Onrashi will indicate that one will have two marriages and so on and so forth. Most importantly, <clears throat> this planet, own house planet, gives you great sense of security. Whatever is signified by this Onrashi planet. No one can snatch away from you. It is with you permanently until and unless you want to leave it. Until and unless you are fed out of it, the thing is not going to go out of your life. In fact, what I have seen that if you have planets in own Rashi, then you are secure. So you say if the seventh Lord is in own Rashi, then no matter how bad one behaves with their life partner or you know, no matter how one is in their marriage, their life partner remains with them. Or if they don't remain with them, then you know the result of this planet is never gone. So you say even if even if you're, you know, say many of your relationships are not working because of any reason or the other, you will not be denied the happiness of it. Many a times in my career, what I have done, I have predicted marriage and such things for even those people who have never expected it to happen. For example, once in an astrology group, I predicted marriage for someone who later claimed that he's around 50 years old and he's a tantric and he's all into sadhanas and everything. And he does not intend to get married, but I am always adamant on my prediction. Two, three years down the lane, he found my number, called me up because by that time I have left the group. I generally don't you know, remain in, now I don't, I'm not in astrological groups and I'm fed up with the uh, people's level of astrology so I generally don't interact with these he found out my number and informed me that he's actually in a relationship and he wants tips from me for relationship and of course I denied it Right? I am not a love guru sitting here but still my point is that you see if any planet is in own house the result signified by that planet is never denied you will get that result so you say if the 10th Lord is in own Rashi, then maybe you are struggling in your profession right now. Don't worry. Maybe you don't have a secure profession right now. Don't worry. But as the Dasha Antar Dasha of this planet come or as this planet fructifies, if the Dasha Antar Dasha is not coming, you will have a secure career. You will have a secure future. And because planet in own Rashi, planet in Mulutrikon, planet in exaltation is called Sthanabali planet. Sthanabali means what? Sthana means position, Bali means strength. So you will have a powerful position related to that planet. If the 10th Lord is in Onarashi, you will have a strong position in your profession. A strong position means either you will be boss of the company or CEO or that level of company. If the 7th Lord is in own sign, then you will be at a ruling stage in your marriage. Your life partner will be listened to you and 
your life partner will benefit more from you they will be not in a position to leave you but you will be in a position of dominance you will be in a position of authority so these planets in whatever areas they signify they give you position they give you authority and they indicate that these things no one can snatch away from you no matter how many difficulties how many obstacles how many bad results happen eventually you will be the winner and eventually you will have the best result right best result signified by this planets as per the natural significations or as per the house lordship of the planet this is something that have to be very clearly understood now as i have told in the previous video also sun is in mool trikon from 0 degree to 10 degrees of leo remaining from 11 degree to 30 degree of leo is own sign of sun the own sign of moon is cancer the own sign of mars is from 13 degrees of aries up to 30 degrees of aries and the complete of scorpio the own rashi of mercury is 20 degree to 30 degree of virgo and the complete of gemini the own rashi of jupiter is 11 degrees to 30 degrees of sagittarius and complete of pisces the own rashi of venus is 16 degrees to 30 degrees of libra and the complete of taurus and the own rashi for saturn is 21 degrees to 30 degrees of aquarius and complete of capricorn right so when a planet goes in own rashi it makes you enjoy position power authority in his dashantar dasha and also related to the things that the planet signifies now talking about own rashi of planet two three tips i will want to share with you generally we consider that sun is the lord of one house and moon is the lord of one house this is also true but for the purpose of predictive astrology the tradition teaches you to treat cancer also as own rashi of sun and leo also as own rashi of moon so when it comes to deciding about two rashis as in when either leo or cancer is in the 8th house 6th house or 12th house such bad houses then whether to take sun or moon as beneficial planet or bad planet will decide on the other rashi so you say if leo is in 5th house then cancer will be in 6th house so this is a pure setup that sun is good and moon is bad now coming to second house and 12th house if there is leo in 12th house then it is a neutral placement for you know planet who is lording the 12th house is known as neutral so whether you should take sun as good or bad now treat cancer as own rashi of sun and because cancer is in 11th house sun should be treated as bad planet for virgo ascendant this will be set up for virgo ascendant for leo ascendant there will be cancer in 12th house it will make moon neutral so you consider moon as good or bad now consider leo also as own rashi of moon and as moon will become the lagna lord for leo ascendant moon is a beneficial planet same happens with second lord also second lord is neutral so if the second house is having leo that will happen for cancer ascendant treat cancer as own rashi of sun and because cancer is falling in the ascendant sun should be considered a beneficial planet that happens for leo as cancer ascendant now if the second house is having cancer then in that particular scenario moon becomes neutral this will be a setup in gemini ascendant now consider leo as second rashi of moon and because leo is falling in the third house moon should be considered as a malefic planet in gemini ascendant now because moon is a malefic planet the dashantar dasha of the moon will be challenging any planet if moon is conjoining or aspecting good planet raj yoga makers lagna lord fourth lord tenth lord fifth lord ninth lord they will tend to destroy the raj yoga destroy the raj yoga means in their dashantar dasha loss of power loss of position can happen if they are conjoining with the second lord or 11th lord or making any connection with second lord or 11th lord then they will tend to destroy the dhani yoga that means because of their significations or in their dasha antar dasha loss of money will happen that is a point other than that additionally what you will see for other planets for mars and venus their own rashis are mutually 6 8 to each other right aries scorpio is 6 8 to each other libra taurus is 6 8 to each other now in this particular case the planet can only save a rashi he cannot save both the rashis right so you know for for an example one confusion is there that if any of these planets are the lagna lord then whether to consider them as benefic or not because along with being lagna lord they will become lord of either the 6th house or 8th house there is a clear cut rule for that lagna lord is always positive so 
if they are lagna lord they are always positive but other than that other than that many a times we are confused regarding the result for example you say for a person you say leo ascendant person what will happen for a leo ascendant venus will be the lord of third house and venus will be lord of 10th house now if venus is powerful or venus is in any placement whatever is the result whether that is coming to the rashi libra or it is coming to the rashi taurus that will be the decisive factor now in this cases let let's understand one thing that both these rashis if a planet owns two rashis one will be a male rashi and other will be a female rashi so if venus is situated in male rashis aries gemini leo libra sagittarius and aquarius then venus will give more result to his male rashi libra whereas if venus is situated in female rashi taurus cancer virgo scorpio capricorn and pisces then venus will give more result towards his female rashi taurus so you say exaltation of venus because venus becomes exalted in a female rashi is better result giving for taurus as compared to libra the same thing happens for mars and all planets if even ever you have to decide that if mars is exalted which rashi will get the maximum good result because mars is exalted in female rashi scorpio will get better result good result but because it is exalted in third from scorpio though scorpio gets the maximum good result but it is not felt completely so there have to be you have to synchronize yourself with the result this is very important remedy is one part you do remedy for a planet remedy works or not that is another point another good point is synchronization that you should make suitable changes in your nature behavior character so that you can enjoy the result of planet for example mars indicates courage and if you are timid if you don't courage if you, if you don't have courage if you don't show courage then 100% result of mars you cannot enjoy so you have to make yourself like the planet if you 100% want to enjoy the result of planet otherwise it will be problematic this is something that you have to understand this is one of the tip specifically this becomes very evident this particular principle the planet situated in male rashi gives result to male rashi the planet situated in female rashi gives result to female rashi these rules are more prominent or you know it indicates a more contrasting result in the case of venus and mars because they rule 6 8 rashis to each other one thing is very clear understand one thing regarding the nature of mars and venus because their both rashis are mutually 6 8 to each other you should understand one thing regarding mars and venus that whenever they show a result they support one type of result so they don't give another type of result. so mars and venus want you to create sacrifice only one type of result they will give for an example you say venus is exalted now if exalted venus have given you a lot of luxuries it will not give you good marriage if it will give you good marriage it will not give you a lot of luxuries so this contrasting thing in the nature will be there because of their mutual lordship of house same goes with mars as well a powerful mars if it gives you power authority etc in your profession because mars is commander in chief he is the lord of army so good status if mars gives you good status then other things related to mars you know mars indicates generosity mars indicates power mars indicates courage these things will not be there if the courage etc of mars is there or say good relationship with siblings are there then in that particular scenario authority mars will not give so this contradiction is in the nature of these two planets because their mutual rashis are six set to each other you have to understand if the native tells you that i live a very luxurious or if you come to know that native lives a very luxurious life because of a strong venus then in that particular scenario their marital life will not be good of course you can also live a luxurious life because of a strong fourth house then the marriage can also be good but this difference you have to understand right they are contradictory planets right they give one type of result only both type of result they don't give now come to next set mercury and jupiter you will see their rashis are mutually 48 to each other right gemini virgo is 48 to each other sagittarius pisces are sorry 410 to each other sagittarius pisces are also 410 to each other 
This makes these two planets as sustainers. This is what I have found. These two planets, Jupiter, Mercury are sustainers. That means whatever is the result of the house where they are situated in or whatever is the result of the house they are expecting, they always sustain the result. Sustain the result means it never perishes. Now, what do you do with that? They sustain the result. This will be evident in their dasha antar dasha. They sustain the result. This change how you interpret the planetary results. For an example, you say 11th house. 11th house indicates good income also. 11th house indicates awards, recognitions and owners also. So if Venus or Mars is in the 11th house, then if good income is there, person is not having recognition. If recognition is there, person is not having good income, either of them. Now, because Mercury and Jupiter are supporters. If Jupiter is in the 11th house, then all the results of 11th house is supported. So person have good income also. Awards, accolades and owners also. And anyone does not get an award. Someone who have done something significant only, that person will get award. So they will also do significant things. Once you are awarded, you also become popular. People know you. So popularity they will also give. So whereas Venus and Mars will give one type of result and deny another type of result, the speciality with Jupiter and Mercury is they give all the results. For an example, seventh house indicates travel also, seventh house indicates marriage also. Mars, Venus in the seventh house, either the person have a lot of travel, travel one cannot do this way only. So one will have good income. One will have a tension-free, carefree life. One don't. One will not be responsible for multiple things, so that they can go anywhere, travel anywhere, and that. If one have this much freedom, their marital life will not be good. If their marital life, it, life is good, then this freedom will not be there. So Mars or Venus is in the seventh house. It does indicate that for good marriage, you will have to do a lot of sacrifice on your personal front. You like traveling. Mars or Venus is there in the seventh house. You have to leave traveling if you want good marriage. If you continue to travel, the good marriage will not be there. Whereas Jupiter, Mercury, in the seventh house, they will indicate that marriage is good also. Person is traveling a lot as well. So whatever result is indicated by the house, Jupiter, Mercury sustains both the results. Whereas Mars and Venus only sustains one type of result. Now six planets are covered. The only planet is Saturn. Now, regarding Saturn, the two Rashis of Saturn, Capricorn and Aquarius, are 212 to each other. Now, in this particular scenario, one Rashi will be supported and another Rashi will not be supported. So, Saturn is also like Mars Venus. But there is one difference. Regarding Mars Venus, because the Rashis are 6 8 to each other, they give one type of result and deny another type of result. Saturn does not deny, but it makes you do constant hard work. Or if it gives result, it gives in very limited quantities. For an example, you say if Saturn is in 11th house, as I told you, 11th house indicates awards, accolades, owners and income also. Saturn in 11th house, if it gives you awards, accolades and owners, then in that particular scenario, either the income is lesser than the hard work, lesser than what the native is doing, right? So more hard work, less income. Or if the income is good. Then the, though the person is appreciated, he gets awards, accolades. So he is getting appreciated, but not getting awarded. So with Saturn, the thing is, though Saturn indicates both the result, but only one result is in 100% full quantity. In the matters of another result, you are always struggling. So Saturn in 7th house, what is happening? If the marital life is good, then to travel with your life partner, spend time with your life partner, go to movie, go to restaurant, there will always be fights. Despite these fights also, two, three times a year, you will go for travel and you will enjoy. But remaining time, there will be fighting, there will be bickering, there will be a compromise. So this is something that is related to Saturn that you have to very, very clearly understand. And regarding all these planets, you have to understand. And how this understanding comes? This understanding comes by understanding the mutual placement of the two planets. Mutual placements of the two Rashi of the planets. Many a times, students are very surprised that, sir, how do you know we only tell you that? You know, say, Venus is the Lord of the Ascendant and if it is situated in this particular house, what will be the result? And you quickly tell us that Venus is also the Lord of 8th house. So how do you do that? Because generally in a class, this happens, you no know, people try to ask questions only keeping one factor in mind. 
But horoscope analysis is not like that. No, you don't keep only one factor in mind. For the Taurus ascendant native, people will ask that Lagana Lord is exalted. What good result it will give? You should understand that Eighth Lord is also exalted. So students generally become surprised that, sir, how do you quickly, you know, how do you quickly recall the planet as a Lord of which houses? And this is very easy to do once you have remembered this mutual placement of houses, mutual placement of planetary rashes. It is very, very easy to do. That is one thing. Secondarily, as I always keep on telling that our sages have developed the system of astrology. So they have found about planets. They have decided the significations of planet. Now sun is the significator of father. This they did not found. Sun resonates with Agni Tattva. This they have found. Sun is exalted in Aries that they have found. Sun should rule the Rashi Leo that they have found. Sun should rule Leo that is because of symbology. Sun is exalted in Aries that is because of astronomical degrees. Right, sun is the Agni Tattva that is because of the nature, observing the nature of the sun. These things too they have found out. Now sun will be the significator of father. There is no uh, feature to decide that. But because fire is connected to dharma also and the first person to instill dharma in your mind is father. And in the planetary cabinet, sun is the first planet. That's why sun also signifies father. This way, these significations are developed. And I am not telling it to you just because of my fancy imagination. I am telling it to you because of my knowledge of astrological history that I have studied for many years. Right, that is the point. I don't see things lightly. Right. <clears throat> so, because sages have derived formulas based on these ideas, which is very evident when you study the history of astrology, you should also look carefully at these things, you know, mutual placements of rashis of planets, right? Where is the placement of exaltation rashi of the planet from the Mulutrikona rashi or owner rashi of the planet? These things, if you minutely see, many new secrets of astrology will come up to you. And remember one point, I always say astrology is an intellectual science, right? There are a few things. A person who have not learned much or a person who cannot think very fast, they can do any job is not true, right? They are fit for few jobs and they are unfit for few jobs. It is something that you have to accept. A person whose learning is slow, a person whose mathematics is not very good, does not work well as a cashier, does not work well in a bank, right? That is a very simple fact. You have to understand that. So astrology in the same manner is an intellectual science. You have to put a very comprehensive, extensive intelligence into astrology. You have to give your time and give your mind to astrology. You have to do some mental hard work because it is an intellectual science. Otherwise, you cannot expect much progress in astrology. Maybe you know about the result of planet and houses. You remember that, you tell that, but that will not make you give good and correct predictions. Right? It will need you to put your mind, think about things, develop an understanding. And after that, when you give predictions, after subtly modifying it according to your understanding, only then your predictions will come 100% correct. This I can guarantee you. So keep this in mind. And if you wish to learn more about planets in detail, right? How it, first of all, all the basic significations of planets that 80% of the astrologers don't know. For example, do you know that Sun and Mars indicate summer season? Okay, now you know. What to do with the summer season? Sun and Mars indicate summer season means what? What does it do? These things I have taught in detail in two of my courses, Mastering the Birth Chart and Mastering the Graha. Mastering the birth chart nowadays in October 2023. I'm also teaching live. You can join that. This is the first course that you should do. After that, advance about planets. You can learn in Mastering the Graha, also known as Mastering the Planets. So these two courses you can consider joining if you want to learn about planetary significations and how to use them in predictions in depth, in detail. And these courses are highly effective. And after these courses, like if you are a learner, you have been learning from other sources and uh, multiple places. My courses will give you an edge over others. Why? Because I teach those things which is never taught by others. And generally, my students excel very well in predictions. You find any of my students and talk to them about my teaching and talk to them about their predictive skills. They will tell you what I should tell you. Let's see if you want to know more about planet, these two things you can consider. Or you can continue watching my YouTube channel. And there is multitude plethora of information. If you just watch all of my videos from starting up to this extent, you will know more astrology. Then you will know by 
रीडिंग एस्ट्रोलॉजी फॉर टेन ट्वेंटी ईयर्स और लर्निंग फिफ्टी सिक्सटी कोर्सेज ऑफ अदर्स राइट सो बी सीरियस अबाउट लर्निंग एस्ट्रोलॉजी एंड बी वेरी क्लियर दैट इट इज एन इंटेलेक्चुअल साइंस यू हैव टू पुट योर माइंड एंड देन जस्ट फॉलो माई वीडियोज that will be enough and if you want advanced knowledge if you want to really make it to the astrology then the two courses that i have recommended you you should join